So what we have here is what we're going to do is we're going to cook some ribs. I was at my uh, local co-op and I'm just going to show you what we were able to get. Sometimes when uh, things are on sale, I like to buy them and cook them because it's a lot cheaper than going out and eating. Now what I got is I got pork side rib strips and they were, um, this pack here was uh, $12.37 and it's not a bad slab of meat. And this one right here was $13.84 uh, and again not too bad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cook those up and I'm going to show you how I do that. So I'm just going to grab my knife and my cutting board and I'm going to show you what I do next. So yeah, as you can see there, that's a pretty big piece of meat. And I'm not going to want to like not cut that because what I do is I like to boil them. And the reason I like to boil them is because I like to make sure the meat is fully cooked and it does also help with the, um, the tenderness of the meat. And once I um, finish cutting these, I'm going to boil them. And I'll show you what they'll look like as they're boiling as well. That way you can get some of the grease out as well, right? So I'm going to work on the second package and I'm going to skip forward to the next step when they're in the pots and show you what that looks like. Okay, so now that we have it all cut up, what we're going to do is we're going to put some water in and we're going to boil. Now, you don't have to boil yours, but I like to boil mine to get the extra fat and grease out. So, just going to fast forward to the next part where it's boiling. So, now that I have them on the stove, I'm going to just boil them to uh, take some of the excess grease out. And you want to flip them over every once in a while just to make sure that both sides are getting you know some water because sometimes that happens i'm going to put a cover on that one right there just because it seems to be hotter than the other burner seems to be getting so i'm just going to let that boil for probably another 10 minutes and i'm going to fast forward to what it's going to look like in about 10 minutes So now that they've been boiling for the 10 minutes, I'm going to take off the cover and show you what that looks like. And as you can see, the meat's completely changed its color. So this, and you can see the grease actually floating at the top of the water. Now that would be all grease that would be in your sauce. And if you can boil some of it out, why not, right? So I'm going to preheat the oven now to 375 why that's uh, boiling. I'm actually going to turn those down now. The other one needs a little bit more time so I'm going to leave that go for a few more minutes. But the one in the gray pot, since that burner is a little hotter than the other, I'm going to turn off the heat and allow that to cool down. And then I'll show you the next step of uh, this uh, easy anyone can make uh, ribs at home. So I'm just going to fast forward to the next part. So it's now time that we can get the ribs ready for the uh, oven. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to use this oval loaf, or roaster pan and everybody seems to have one of those in their home. And I'm going to use a pair of tongs to take it out. And as you can see, the meat is definitely different than what it started out with. And we're going to put it in the roaster. Ooh. Slippery little bugger. So there's none left in that one. So now we're going to move to the next pot. And we're going to continue to put them in that roaster. So we're going to open up the second lid and see uh, how those ones look. And as you can see, they're definitely boiled. So we're going to take them out of there and put them in this roaster. Hopefully they'll all fit in there. If not, I have a backup plan. I always have a backup plan. Definitely a lot of meat here for, what was it, 26 bucks in total or something like that. Now, I could go to one of the local rib houses and spend that kind of money just on one 
one dinner, right? So I definitely have enough here to feed a few people. And I have one more piece. Okay, so I'm just going to put them over on the counter and then we'll get ready to put the sauce on and I'll show you how to do that as well and what sauce I prefer on a low budget. So I'm just going to fast forward until we're over at the counter. I just wanted to show a quick glimpse of what it would look like with all that grease still in there so you can see why I boil it. Okay, so we're just gonna go to the counter now. So this is my favorite part of the ribs. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some barbecue sauce that I have here, which is craft barbecue sauce. And when I was at the store and I found that the ribs were on sale, they were um, also on sale because it's summertime. And it's only 99 cents a bottle, so what I do is I just take it and I start pouring it onto the ribs. Like these are so simple anybody can make them. Even people who don't think they can cook can make these ribs. It's really one ingredient rib besides the meat, right? Now I have four bottles that I'm going to use. And don't throw your bottles out because we're going to need those. So with the sauce and the, uh, the ribs, it's still a meal under 30 bucks. And it's going to feed plenty. Like if you had to go anywhere like to a function or a potluck or anything like that, you could actually make these and no one would ever notice the difference. And if you wanted to trick them, you could always cut up an onion and put it in with the uh, ribs and they would think it was your own homemade sauce. But no need to trick people. You could tell them, hey, it's a really good recipe. So I'm going to use the three bottles instead of four. And I'm just going to cover up the spots that need covering. So we have quite a bit left in our bottles and I'm going to show you what we're going to do next about that. So what I'm doing at the sink is anybody that grew up in a poor home knows this trick. You turn the water on a little bit, you take the ketchup bottle or barbecue sauce bottle, whatever bottle you want to use, and you put a little bit of water in it. And since I used three bottles, I'm going to do it three different times. And what it does is it actually thins it out a little bit. So now that we have our bottles with a little bit of water in them, we're going to put the covers back on. And then we do my favorite part. We shake them. And you're probably wondering why you're doing that. Well, we want that little bit out of that bottle if we can get it. And I have one more. And the extra water in the bottle also works with thinning out the uh, sauce for it's not so thick so it doesn't burn while it's cooking. So I'm just going to show you the next step. So we're just going to take the first bottle and we're going to sprinkle it in and as you can see it moves a lot uh, easier. So there's one, and here's the second. Now you don't have to do this step if you have lots of money and you could afford to throw stuff away. I can't. That's not my lifestyle. I don't even encourage that kind of lifestyle. So I'm just going to do the last one. 
So we're gonna just cover up these ribs now and I'm gonna put them in the oven for an hour and I'm gonna fast forward when they come out of the oven to show you what they look like. Just wanted to take the ribs out and show you what they look like after about a little over an hour of cooking. Now we're just gonna poke them with a fork. And as you can see, it just falls. So they are done. So I'm just going to uh, cover them up and wait for uh, the rest of my supper to be done. And uh, thanks for watching. And anybody can make these, so thanks again. So I just wanted to show what the ribs look like on the plate with the salad and those jazz potatoes that I showed before. So it is a great meal. It was done rather cheap and it's going to feed probably like 12 people on a budget that would in a restaurant feed too. So thanks for watching. Subscribe and have a great day.